Welcome to the garden. Today I've rounded up all my Chrysula, specifically the Chrysula rupestris. I believe that's how it's pronounced. And I think this variety is actually Chrysula rupestris perforata. I'm not exactly sure, and it doesn't really matter. It's basically just a stacking Chrysula, a Chrysula that grows mostly vertically. These are often called uh, jade necklace, baby necklace, a string of buttons, or even rosary vine. But they're incredibly easy to propagate as long as you know a couple little secrets. So I've done quite a few experiments over the past few months and I think I've gotten a handle on just exactly how these grow. So if we take a close look at one of my older cuttings, this one here in this tiny pot, I took this as a crown cutting. This was no more than the very top of a plant. So they emanate from the rosette, which I like to call the crown, and as they grow up, they produce these stem segments so that the leaves can get more light. It's really brilliant how they do this. That's kind of the stacking thing. They look like a pagoda. If you don't know what a pagoda is, um, I'll put the name up. You can Google that and check it out. But they look like a Japanese pagoda. They're just beautiful. These were my most recent cuttings. Some of these I took as simple stem segments with one leaf. And these crowns actually started rooting within a week. It's really incredible how fast the crowns can root. But the ones that I took without crowns, look, they're starting to grow new rosettes. There's a little one there, and a nice one forming there. When I started these experiments, I had two containers. We had this one, which is now just lush, and I think one of the most beautiful succulent containers I have. And then I had this one here, which is incredibly tall. But look at how gorgeous this is. This is why we grow succulents. They're just incredible. And look at all the leaves on this. We have two tiny ones right at the center. So that's like one pair. Then we have this really little one here. So that's another, there's another little one here, and they go alternate. They alternate their leaves so they can get the most amount of sun. And the spacing in between allows just enough sun to go through. So each leaf is covered in sun, look at that. It's really incredible. So we're going to take a few more cuttings today and I'll show you all my secrets on propagating chrysulas. Last time we planted out these cuttings that were rooting in water. And if I remember, I think it was this one didn't have any roots whatsoever. But now look, we've got beautiful new growth, which means we actually have roots forming down below. The ones with the crowns are usually the best performers. They start rooting right away, and they really grow quickly. You can see all of these are just doing beautifully. These are all cuttings. The ones without crowns do some really incredible stuff too. They actually grow two new crowns. The one in the center there has this double rosette on top. And then this one has two one on top and one a little further down. So we're going to take this and just cut that first segment. We really can't get the scissors in between this leaf and that one, so we're going to take it right down to here. That's about the minimum we can possibly take. So I start with a real cheap potting soil and I amend it with some of this perlite really lightens everything up, improves the drainage, and then I also add sand just to further improve that drainage. 
So all we're going to do is press them into that soil. So we're just going to cut all these crowns. And I've got a nice sharp scissors that's nice and clean so that our cuts don't really damage the plant too much. And these plants were all cuttings. So we're taking cuttings from cuttings. And we're just going to multiply our stock as much as we can. So we could stop right here and just root these crowns. But I'm actually going to take a few more cuttings. I'm going to go about halfway down. So this then will form two new crowns. And then we can take this and root it either in soil or directly in water. It's important to allow these wounds to heal. So before we place this in wet soil or water, we're going to allow this wound to heal for, I think, a couple days, one or two days. And it's a, usually a good idea to strip the bottom leaf or two. Just pull it off like this. And these you can actually save and root. They're going to take a really long time though. So we're going to take two of these leaves just so that we can press this into the soil. So I'm actually going to allow this to heal in some soil. This is dry, so we're not going to be rotting away the stem. I'm just going to be pressing it down straight into some dry soil. And then in a couple of days, we'll come back and water. And then we'll start to form roots. So we can do that all along here. I'm just going to take them about halfway. I'm going to strip one or two of the bottom leaves. We'll just do one here. And then press them directly into some dry soil. I want to be a little careful not to bend that stem. Just like that. So those are my two favorite ways to propagate these. By the crowns, which actually by themselves will root incredibly fast. And then by little segments with multiple leaves and multiple stems. They do the best. We actually only need one leaf. So we can check up on these cuttings that were taken a while ago and see just how they're doing. So this is one leaf with about two stem segments. That means there was another leaf here that I stripped down but you can see we've actually got some root there. We'll do two leaves and strip one of them. Just like that. So then this is ready to plant. We're just going to nestle that into our soil the same way we did our other ones. Straight into some dry soil let that heal and then come back and water in a couple days. So we can actually do that again on this very same cutting. So we've taken one crown and two little cuttings just from that one plant. It's probably a little early to cut these crowns but let's just do it just for fun. I'm going to cut all the way down we're going to strip that bottom leaf very gently. So I ended up just taking that crown. And hopefully, this cutting where we took these crowns will actually grow new crowns then. So we'll be able to kind of use this as a perpetual crown creator. So I think this is going to be a really efficient way to grow chrysoulas. Just taking these crowns and then allowing them to regrow. So all of these are going to then root and we'll have an entire container of brand new plants. So it's really easy to multiply these quite quickly just by taking crown cuttings and these little segmented 
leaf cuttings. These leaves can actually root, but they take a really long time. That's the only one we've actually gotten to do this. So out of four months and maybe 50 or so of these leaves, we've only got this little guy. So really not my favorite way to propagate, but it is possible. So if we're taking cuttings and stripping those bottom leaves, you might as well save them. I just set these out on some either sand or some soil. You don't really need to miss them, but you certainly can if you want. And hopefully they'll start to grow little roots. We're going to add this little rooting leaf directly into our cuttings just to keep them all in one place. So these are all going to be brand new plants. I'm going to bury this leaf just enough so that we can get those roots under the soil. Just like that. So there are little roots are just covered and our little leaf is still sticking out so it can get sun. So our cuttings are all nestled into the soil now and we're just going to leave these to sit dry for a couple days. We really want those wounds to heal and then we'll come in and give them a good drink. The container doesn't really matter. I have a plastic one here but I do prefer terracotta. They need to dry out in between waterings so the terracotta can really help that along. I like to use plastic basins just so that I can set them on windowsills without water leaching through a terracotta base. This little guy over here is in a tiny pot and it actually doesn't have any drainage. So as long as you water it sparingly you can actually get away with some really interesting containers. But the amount of sunlight is important. You want to give these basically full sun all day. So I have mine in a south facing window so they get tons of sunlight and once they start growing new crowns the cuttings should be able to take that full sun. But until then our new cuttings are going to be partially shaded. You want to give them as much bright ambient light as possible and a little bit of direct sunlight is good. But too much can dry them out so you want to maybe give them a break about midday. Got some really beautiful plants here. So if you want to propagate your chrysoulas, I hope you give this a grow. Thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you next time.